All right. I think that's time, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it. Hey, folks. Hey, Jace. Ponder Pimp. Chimera. DBDD, I think I saw in there. Anyone else can shout out if they're around. Uh, audio video okay? Thank you very much. So, we're basically just going to carry on with where we were last week. And uh, I did have a brief look at this yesterday. Mm, not much else. Um, hey, Darius. Um... Yeah, and I found a couple of bugs. And one was in my code, which was really dumb. And uh, I'll show you that now, if I was on the right computer. Let's jump over here. Oh, and let's start up the, uh, the doodle. Yeah, it's fine. Cool, and where are we? Terrain, here we go. So, up here, where did I have it? Okay, erosion step zero, this is it. So some of the first things we do are calculate the UV coordinates of our neighbor position. So we have some position in UV coordinates between 0 and 1. Uh, we upload the texture size so we can uh, do 1 over texture size and that's how we know the distance to the next texel, up and down and left and right, because we're going to query uh, those things. However, I had this set to text size rather than text step. So it was just wrapping around and querying the same pixel every single time. Um, so when I was trying to find the difference in height, it would always give me zero. I also did a bit, a couple of other um, cleanup type things. Um, yeah, and, and they're in the uh, they're in one one or two of the commits from the last few days. Um, but that was the main thing. There was a uh, a bug in the paper as well. And I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was a... Yes! Um, in the paper, I think this says max 1, this. When you're working out the K factor, it should have actually been min. I found another implementation of this online done in CUDA. And so I checked their version. And they have the same thing. They use min rather than max. And that fixed everything up. And we now get to see it doing something. And I fucking love this because it's so... It's got a bug, and I think you're gonna like it. Let's, uh, let's clear this. <laughs> See if you can spot what goes wrong here. Let's just do one, um, yeah, there's one frame. Let's let it run. And you'll see it in a second. Look at the direction the water's running. It's just fantastic. We've got, we've got something fucked up, and the water's running uphill. I also love the fact that we can see these um, kind of diamond artifacts. So this is the, the red component is the height. The yellow in here is actually green, is the, um, is the water depth. But because our water's running uphill, <laughs> it forms these little piles. So we've got tiny piles of water forming on all of the crests of the hills, which is just the most magical fucking stupid thing I've ever seen. So that, that made me super happy yesterday. <laughs> and that started working. You can call it working. It's, it's, it's sort of working, but wrong. Um, so what we're seeing, yeah, this stuff down here, this is the flux that we were calculating. Um, so this is the water pressure from every single point outwards to its nearby places. Um, so this is my favorite thing we've done so far. I was so happy to get something working and then you just start seeing this water pile. <laughs> it's actually this fucker over here. That's amazing. I can just imagine someone traipsing across the landscape. What is that in the distance? Is it towers of ice? No, it's, it's piles of water because the god of this land is a fucking moron. Oh, that's great. So, um... <laughs> So that's where that's where we're uh, that's where we're starting from today. So um, we'll get the water falling in the right direction, and um, then hopefully it should settle into valleys. So um, these are lakes, vertical lakes, right? Let's uh, see what's going on over here. Oh yes. Thanks, Pomdepin, for linking the paper we'll be working from today. Um, <laughs> Shimera's giving everyone shit because uh, 
Nobody turned up for his uh, Ludum Dare. Were you doing a stream then, mate? I completely missed it. This, um, these last two weeks, I have just been just clocked off uh, from coding. And so I've just been playing games, playing a lot of The Witness, and then playing Kingdom Hearts again, because it was awesome. Um, except for the camera's terrible and loads of things about it are actually very annoying. But it's still fun. Um, <laughs> of course I was streaming. Who do you think I am? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying I missed that, actually. Oh, actually, Shimera, link the game in its current state so people can test it for you. Try out Shin's game and see if it works in your machine, because apparently things are crashing and we need to know roughly why. Or at least to be able to find some patterns. Oh, this is so stupid. Look, I'm just distracted. Even you can't distract me from how dumb this simulation is right now. But, 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 we gotta, we gotta actually do something. So, let's get back on this. Um, put that over there. And get back to the terrain code. Sweet! Okay, don't need this. Let's see where we got to. So yeah, we start, did we start on the next section? Okay, so I did make a few changes. Last time Shimera um, helpfully pointed out the rotate F function macro, sorry, that I didn't know about before. Really cool. Um, so I've changed my implementation slightly. So we always read from state zero and we always write into state one. And then we've got this swap state function, which just calls rotate f on those two places and swaps them around. So um, that's our double buffering sorted for all this lovely stuff. So here we do the first step, rendering into this FBO, and then we swap, and then we, you know, right into the next FBO. Do on the second step. So we finished off last week being confused. <laughs> I've got to stop this. I've got to stop that damn thing because it's just making big piles of water. Ah, fuck it. They can stay there a few seconds longer. We've got to find out why it's running uphill. Odds are... Right, so let's have a look. New water height. Because I think in... Where is it? Uh, erosion zero. Um... The water is the water plus rain. So there's two possibilities. Either, I, either our flux directions are, are wrong um, or the calculations we do in the next step are wrong. Now, is there an easy way for us to check this? I suppose what we could do is pull down the current state of the... Um, textures with our data in and just do a bit of sanity checking so if we say play stop and that's stop that simulation didn't need to stop it i suppose but whatever um then we are going to get let's have a look let's just make a quick variable that's going to store the terrain and that's fine terrain and then we need the um, what do we call it? Train state, few days, I can't remember anything. Nope, that's not it. Or is it just state zero? There we go, state zero. Um, and then in, ah, oh, fuck it, let's just inspect it and see what we've got going on in there. We have, oh yeah, so we need the height water sediment map. And yeah, so let's do that. Height, water, sediment map. So what I'm hoping to do is find some two pixels which have a height difference and see what the direction of the flux is. And if it's going uphill, then I fucked it up in the first step. And if not, it should be fucked up in the second step. So a sample of texture. So we should get our texture. And then we're just going to pull it down. We're using... Um, pull 1G rather than pull G because pull G is going to take that texture and pull it all the way into Lisp data which is going to involve a lot of copying um, I mean like changing all the data into Lisp format so instead I'm just going to pull it down one level which is going to pull it into a C array so def var um, 
temp zero. And height water sediment map, we're just going to have the water flux map. Def uh, temp one. Okay, let's see what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Does he open a shirt to attract more viewers? No, I've got very few light shirts. Most of my shirts are plain black because I don't care about clothes. Except the problem is, with this hair and beard and a black chair, the camera freaks out and can't work out what part of me is a human face. And so it just it starts focusing all the time. So, I am sorry if you see more than you need to. But, fuck you. <laughs> you turned up here. You should know what you're getting into. Your Honor. Right, um... LD Jam. Ah, I'm gonna play Shimera stuff now. Can't. Must stream. Must do this on the stream. I'm just trying to escape my responsibilities. Right, so let's pull down... So if we do A ref C of temp zero, and we get a look at pixel 100, 100, for example. Okay. So its height is 2.9. Let's look at pixel 101. All right, that's 3.2. So that's uphill. Um, let's look at the water flux at 100, 100. Is zero, which makes sense. No water should be flowing uphill. Um, check it at 101. Eh, we don't get anything there either. That's kind of annoying. Let's find somewhere where we do get some flux. Um... You've got to be in here somewhere. Um, can we also do a wild condition there? Probably. Trying to achieve, who knows? Right. When this is greater than zero, then I. What? Why? Oh, yeah, I'm an idiot enough. Put the cut on there. Okay, so there's nothing. Really? Oh, yeah, because I'm always sampling at 1010, like a fool. Okay, 31. There we go. Just somewhere where there's some activity going on. Okay, so there is some flux at that position. Let's look at what's going on at 3031. Okay, there's something there as well. So, what is the height at this position? And what is the height at that? Okay. So, at 30, the height is 7.4. At 31, it's 7.36. So, that's downhill. But, there is a flux. I think it's left, right, up, down. I think, if I remember correctly. Let's just check quickly. Not that. Not that. Flux, flux, flux. New flux left okay yeah here we go yeah left right so there is a flux going left from 31 i believe yeah where is it here it's going left from 31 that's not right though i don't think because there's no flux going right and this has This has more water and is higher. It should be flowing downhill. I'm wondering if my flux calculation is wrong then. Hmm. We'll have to see. Hey, Van Laser, how you doing, man? <laughs> Pizza game? No. 
<laughs> we have stupid water flowing uphill again at the moment. We, uh, oh yeah, it's not running. One second. I'm just going to run it again because you kind of have to see it because it's just so stupid. Reset the terrain and play. There we go. Just watch how wrong this is. So, um... Oh, I'm doing alright, thanks, man. Yeah, we've got a... We clearly have a mistake. I fixed a couple of bugs over the weekend, and then it started doing this. And I knew I had to leave it at this point, because I wanted you guys to see it. This is water running uphill and forming little piles. Um, which just makes me happy. So, I think it's actually a mistake in our first... Um... In our first stage because it looks like the flux so if where's my pen i cannot doodle with that pen where is it lots of noises for you to listen to while i scrabble around on my messy desk there we go here we are here we are yeah if we've got some terrain and it's got some water on it of various heights the flux is only ever positive, so it, it maxes out, as, it, sorry, its minimum value is zero. So flux should always be downhill, in my mind. Um, and then we take the relative flux from different, oh no, there would be some flux going. Because what we generally do, we calculate the flux for different positions, and then we sum the flux against each other, basically add up the fluxes to see what the final water direction will be. So, hmm. But I think it's going to be in the first section. Eh, we'll see soon enough. Right. Flux left. Uh, flux to offset. Yep. Data at left. And flux. This is the old flux to the left. Is it? Hmm. Yes. This is the old flux to the left. And this is the data at the left coordinate, if I've got that right. So let's have a look actually. Let's check the simple stuff first. Data at, so we're sampling at UVL, which should be our current position minus text step. And text step is one over the texture size. Yeah, so we're taking a tiny step to the left. We're sampling there. And the texture we're sampling is the one that contains the height of water in the sediment map. And so, yeah, we should be querying the height at that position. And then we query the flux for our current uh, coordinate. Yeah, so I'm guessing that we've got a mistake in flux to offset somewhere. Let's go have a look at that. Okay, so we've got offset terrain height, offset water height. So let's follow the logic here. Oh, here's the height diff function. So if anywhere, we would expect it to be here. So the height difference, um, let's say we've got a position here, which is a height 10, and then our neighbor is a height five. We want to have minus five, obviously. So we have our position plus water height minus theirs. No, that's wrong. Is it? Yeah, we need to have their one minus our one, because otherwise it's not going to give us minus five, it's just going to give us five. So that looks like a mistake right here. Oh, oh, oh shit, look at that water go. Oh, that's so cool. I love it when things work. Right, that's really interesting. And that's our water falling downhill now and forming little lakes. It's kind of strange that they don't get deeper though. I'm kind of disturbed by that because we haven't done evaporation yet. So these lakes should be filling up pretty fast. Tell you what, let's just set the rain speed up a lot and see if they start filling up. Set it to 10. Whoa, yeah, that filled up. Ah, no, that's weird though. Because the hills have water on them too. Oh no, that's because the rain speed is so high. So if we set the rain down to zero, it should all just fill in. Oh, but we do have lakes now. Look at that. That is kind of cool. Strange that this water isn't flowing downhill yet. 
<laughs> Water flux fixed. End of stream. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we're done now. We'll play Shamira's games for the rest of the stream. Because, because quit while you're ahead. Oh, man, that is so satisfying, though. It looks like shit, but it's the right kind of shit. It's water in valleys. That is badass. We should actually do some water simulations in general um, after this. At some point. Some fluid dynamic stuff. I've never done that. And that'd be cool. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Right, so let's... Uh, oh, I'm putting water back on now. I think it's just that the water going downhill looks more dramatic than it actually is. Because it's just enough above the ground to for the uh, mesh to be visible. But because, because of the resolution of the mesh, it's not like water droplets. You're raising the entire area, so it's... It looks like more water than it is, but it's fucking working. That's cool. Right. Can't stay happy with myself all night. But that's strange though, right? Like, um, I'm pretty sure we just copied what we were told. Or did we do it wrong? No, look at this. So this is... Their version was... the ground height at your current position so the, the the difference to the left was the current position height plus the water at your current position minus um the height to the left of you minus the water to the left of you but that's going to make that's not going to give you a height delta properly i guess this is another bug in the paper unless I don't know, man. That's kind of weird. Oh, but look at this, though. Little lakes forming everywhere. Badass. Hey, Barrett. How you doing, man? The New Zealand contingent has arrived. <laughs> it's all dark down there for some reason. Dude, we got, um... You missed it, but, um... We were... I had... A really... I, I did some bug fixing over the weekend. Th I'm good, thanks, man. I did some bug fixing over the weekend and I got it to the point where things were happening, but where the water was running uphill and making little piles. So uh, we just changed something and now it's running down and forming legs. Oh, we can just flip this around again. Though. That was so satisfying to watch. But flows uphill and should just form little piles. Wait a second, did I get that right? Yeah, there we go. It's starting to form piles. Interesting how the water from the lakes is still there. Or is it just taking a very long time to migrate? Strange. Let's turn the rain off again and just see what happens. Yeah. The wa oh, of course, the water doesn't. The water doesn't flow uphill. It's a, what? That's very strange. Whatever. Let's put it back to working again. Um, da, 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 da. And the water flows down. Nope. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Back into the legs. Sweet! So, let's reset the simulation and just let it run. And so that water is going to run down. And start forming little puddles. Nice. Okay, so now that's working. Um, what was the other thing I missed out last week? Oh yeah, I didn't calculate the 3D velocity, which is very simple. Um, let's do this. Um, well, gravity is negative there. Um, yeah. Um, no, the, uh, the gravity should be negative. It's going down. Right. Because we're just adding the gravity. I we hope we're gra adding the gravity. That would be interesting. Oh, shit. Yeah, good point. What? No, the flux is meant to be positive, so that's okay. Ooh, interesting. 
Now you've got me asking. Yeah, they use positive gravity. Oh, okay, right, well. We'll do it this way then. That still works. So that's cool. Oh man, that makes my head spin on. But it is working. Cool. Oh, I love seeing those little legs form in the uh, in the flux thing. Right, so where are we? Yes. Wanted to do the 3D velocity. So we had some positions and we have a 2D vector. Oh yeah, we needed to know which Hmm. So we need to know the height difference here, and then we can set that as the the y component of this, and then scale it to its original length, so we keep the magnitude of the vector and we don't change anything there. I think that will do for making the three D vector work. Yeah, that laser. Now I'm confused as well. Um, Saw the guys always upside down. Absolutely. Oh. So, um, yeah, I'm a little bit confused on why that didn't make a difference. We'll look at that later. I just, it's making lakes. I'm fine with it as long as it's making lakes. This is a, a confused god, but it's fine. Right, so, what we want to do is we've got this 2D velocity. Um, we want to scale it to be. Um, offset. So let's take the velocity 2D and we're going to normalize it. Um, B2D norm is going to be normalized for that velocity. And then what are we going to do? We are going to scale that by um, B2D norm. We're going to scale it by the it's a good point. How do we pick which height we're interested in? Um, I mean, we could have a bunch of ifs, but that's really annoying. Or like, a, you know, like a cond or something like this, but that's conditional. Then shaders are kind of sad. So I don't want to do that. If I just multiply it by the step size and then query the height at that position, that could be kind of cool. Um, what was it? What's it called? What's this variable called? Uh, text step. There we go. It depends on the direction, right? Well, no, no, this, this is actually, this will be fine. This will be fine. Yeah, okay. So, um, we'll take the 2D direction, we will scale it down to query the nearest texel, and then we're going to um, we're going to look up, so if we do texture with this as the coordinate and what do we call it? Tight water sediment map. We take the x position of that, that gives us our height at that offset height. Um, and that is just too long. And then what are we going to do with it? We are going to subtract um, our current height. Or is it terrain height? Now we do we want to. Pardon me. Um, if we're flowing down hill, do we want to take the water height into account? We probably do, actually. Offset data. Okay, and then... So then the offset height is the addition of x, which is the terrain height, and y, which is the water depth. 
and then we want to add those together, the water height at our current position. Oh, new water height probably. Can take that into account, doesn't hurt. Um, oh no, let's, let's take the other one, because we're essentially doing this in parallel across the entire thing. So we want to take the original data, so let's do water height. And then we... I think this is okay. So new Y is this. We should really come up with better names, but I don't care. Right, so velocity 3D is going to be... Oh, it's just this, isn't it? This and our new Y. And then we're going to um, normalize it. Whoops. So we maintain the direction and then we multiply it by the original length. So velocity 2D. I think that works. So that will. Could all just do this in line. Too much velocity 3D. There we go. Um, symbol offset height is undefined. What? No, it's not. It's right there. What are you talking about? Ah, oh, well, that's dumb. Um, offset data, of course. Data. Ah, data. That'll do. And the water's still flowing downhill, so I don't have to argue about it yet. Nice. Okay, so with that out of the way, we can start writing the next stage because we, now we have height and water depth. We have uh, a flux map and we should also have, though I haven't got it enabled yet, draw text top right, a velocity map. So this is showing the uh, velocity of the water as it's traveling. Um, it's a bit weird at the moment, and that's just what well, I mean. There's loads of data missing because a lot of them are traveling in negative directions, so this will only show things flowing in positive directions, which is gash, but you know. Textures. Um, and, and doing this debugging has really been a pain in the backside. I'm just, I've really wanted to be able to just do print statements inside my textures, inside my um, shaders, sorry. So I am really going to have to look into how I'm going to do debugging of um, shaders soon. I've got some ideas for that using uh, transform feedback and injecting additional um, FBOs and um, yeah, basically using multiple render targets to write out more information. Um, and so then when you call a map G, it'll actually do a couple of passes. It'll run the shader once in debug mode, dumping out all the things you've queried. Um, and then it will run it again, doing your actual rendering. Um, to the C. If I remember correctly, V is proportional to the square of the height or pressure. Um, yes, remember, de debugging shaders is just a bleep pain. But we will have fixes and we can hide them because we've got, like, because our, um, because the way we call shaders in this is already wrapped up in macros, we can inject any code we like in there. So, uh, Keppel, Keppel will get that feature eventually. But now we need to carry on with the paper. So let's, um, let's assume we've got something vaguely useful here and we'll carry on. Did we calculate C last time? I think we did that. Did we do... Well, yeah, we've got this erode sediment business, but we don't do anything with it. Ugh. Oh, yeah, we, we've got calc C here, which looks vaguely useful. And we do erode sediment, which gives us new terrain height, new sediment. Do we use new sediment anywhere? We don't. But 
I mean, God knows if this is correct, but it looks like we've done this already. Who knows? Let's let's just put new sediment in here and see what happens. New water height, new terrain height. Hey, new terrain height. Cool. Interesting. Oh, now we're going to... Before I actually run that, I'm going to get rid of some of this debug stuff here. Let's get rid of these for a few seconds. And... Oh, which way should we split this? Split this vertically. Repl and reset terrain until the water starts flowing down. And then let's recompile this. It would be awesome if it actually starts taking some of the terrain off. Actually, we will want to be able to see this one because this will contain sediment. RGB, so we're looking for blue tinges in this and that will tell us that sediment is being moved. That would be really cool. Hmm. I guess if we... I mean, what we can do is, while we're waiting for this, because these values are going to be quite small to begin with. Let's go and go to the pull G stuff again. And we'll just do a bit of fucking around. One second. So, free temp zero, and then set F temp zero to be this. Uh, no, we're going to have um, height, blah, 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 blah. What is it? Height, water, sediment map. Yeah, like that. Cool. So now temp zero has new values. The current values. M0. ARFC. 100. 100. No sediment there. Nope. No sediment on the diagonal. Oh, wait, fuck. Yes, there is. Check 140. Oh, don't be an idiot. Where is it? Come on. 140, 140. 140. I've been lied to. Oh, 139. Am I just being a Muppet somehow? I got a feeling I'm not actually reading this in my excitement. When Z is greater than zero. Hmm. Shenanigans. Oh, it's temp one. What a muppet. Okay. Yeah, we're meant to be looking at temp zero. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Okay. <laughs> Brad says ASTs as graph, perhaps? I'm not sure what you're asking there. I mean, it's about the debugging, I assume, but um, not sure. Even the paper is inverted, Van Laser. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I'll go. I'll go through it properly at some point. Okay, so we we should be getting something though, like we, like some sediment in all this. Let's have a look. What are the conditions for us getting sediment? Let's go to a road, and it was current sediment. Hmm. Plus said and said is time delta times hardness times soil suspension rate and again as usual slime enable ah concurrent hints is 0.5, C minus ST, ST is current sediment, which would be zero, and C is going to be whatever value we calculate C to be. So, and then hardness, what are we doing for hardness? I think all of the, yeah, local hardness is always 0.5, so some small number, 0.01 probably at the moment. I think I hard coded to 0.01 because I just wanted it to be stable. Um, 
So 0 0.01 times 0 0.5, which is even a smaller number, and we multiply it by the so soil suspension rate, which is 0 0.5 times whatever the difference between these things are. So it, basically, this all comes down to C. And then if the current sediment is less than C, well, current sediment to be zero in, to begin with. So it has to be less than C. So let's go and look at C and work out what we did there. So we passed in a normal, the water height, velocity 2D and velocity 3D. So, I mean, we could just set this to 0 0.1 and see what happens. That would be the other thing to do. Yeah, let's give it a value, 0 0.5, why not? And then just see if we get any kind of erosion going on. What should happen is, oh man, I love seeing the water flow. Um, let's see if we can set it up a bit too. Um, hmm. Nothing obvious happening there, but then again, it's going to be pretty small values to begin with. So let's pull down another copy. Nothing there yet. No. Hmm. Sediment is going into the Z coordinate, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, new sediment. We write that out, and then we don't ditch that in erosion step zero. Here we go. Sediment mount is here. Come on, fool. Right. And then we throw it back in here. So sediment mount should never be removed. And then the result of all this is new sediment, which is right there and we throw it here so if the value comes out well, let's let's just see that this is being propagated first let's see. if we just set it to one then we get that everywhere so that's cool um and we've set it back to zero now then we start that off again so that should be doing something Oh yeah, we were doing calc C, weren't we? Come on! How much, how high do I have to set this value before something happens? So right now, C is really high. C is going to be 102. And then we come into here. Oh wait! Oh, you idiot, Chris. There we go. Hey, <laughs> and that looks like some kind of er erosion going on. So what's happening here is we're removing terrain. Um, I'm not sure how far down that will go. Probably keep going. Okay, anyway, that looks like something's happening, which is cool. And it is leveling out some of the hills a bit, which is nice. Um, calc C. There we are. Let's remove this and put it... Whoa, that's weird. Why is it going... That looks wrong. <laughs> Holy shit, what is all of that? That's... Well, that was worth it, whatever it was. That was funny. <laughs> huh. Didn't expect that one. Okay. How quickly does that happen if we just leave it now? Oh, I... I wonder if that was... I wonder if that was deposition. Was that all the sediment falling out of solution? You know, I think, I think it might have been actually because we have... When we do a road sediment, there's this condition down in here which if the amount of sediment is less than C, we remove some height from the terrain and we add some the same value to the current sediment. But here, 
we do deposition. We drop some of our sediment onto the terrain and we remove that amount of sediment from our water. Oh, that's actually really cool. So it worked. We just dissolved <laughs> like the world into a, our liquid. And then we got the, all the liquid to release all the soil, which just went mental. I don't know what that massive diamond was though. I mean, the diamond artifact was due to the fact that we do our flux is left, right, up, and down. So we're going to move in diagonals. You're going to get a box artifact regardless. It's like when you're doing box blur and stuff like this. You can see that artifact. And we can see blue here now. You can see... Oh, wow. Oh, that, that's a new stream. That means this is actually eroding... Well, that's actually really interesting. We should be able to see this change of the train. There's some activity going over here. I need to add um, you are here to this, but there is down here. There's some erosion going on. Wonder where that is. Here probably. This area is a real good candidate for getting eroded at some point. Help. Oh. Everyone else seems to realize what's going on. It's just me that's confused. Oh, it's cool though. Right. I can see some blue. Yes, we're getting blue. That's, that is, that's pretty cool. Oh man, I'm really happy with that. One day we'll have to make this look good as well. But right now this is kick ass. Oh yeah, I'm really looking forward to this bit here. It's really interesting. I want to see this get joined up. So we'll just leave this running while uh, while we work. Because we have another step to do. Well, we have more of the paper to implement anyway. Um, so we've obviously have done C and we've done this stuff. So we're KD, blah, 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 blah. To prevent negative water heights. I think we did this last time. This is ringing bells anyway. ST, which is current, this is okay, the sediment and then at the current point at the next time step equals this. To prevent negative blah blah blah. Oh yeah, this these are the two cases, right? This two here were the ones in our erode sediment function. So I think. Where R min is the local limit, the lower limit of hardness, KH, prevent negative water heights in 12C. We clamp the dissolve amount of water. Do we have clamp? Oh, yeah, so we do. Okay, so we've done that bit already as well. And I've got such good memory. Okay, so if point is not on the grid, the model uses linear interpolation between the four closest grid points. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, that would just be... Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll just go, we'll go with this. I'm gonna pretend it's okay. In nature, the evaporation has negligible effects, but in our model, it's important because the fiend, the, the scene, the fiend, the scene will, would uh, fill up with water by the time, uh, by the time if the water was not removed. This paper needed a bit more of an editor. I mean, I can't knock them because they've written something that's actually readable and for the most part it works. But man, okay, so where are we? Our thermal erosion model is based on... Okay, so we've done... This is... I think we've got hydraulic erosion done. I think what we've got here is the hydraulic erosion model. Um, and now we just need to work on um, thermal erosion. Thermal erosion is very simple. It's just the idea that um, as temperatures change, you're going to get freezing and thawing and it's going to crack up rocks and stuff like this. So you'll get small amounts of the terrain are just going to come loose. And when they come loose, gravity takes over and those things, I mean, if the hill is steep enough, it, it's going to start falling downhill. So we'll get this slumping going on. Um, and yeah, that'll be, that should be it. Sorry, I'm distracted. Little bloody flies coming out. We've got banana flies in this country. They're really annoying. 
Um, is the blue solution density of the sediment? Yes, that is the, um, it's the quantity of sediment in that cell. Yeah, in the fluid in that cell. Yeah. No Man's Sky version 2 in Lisp. Yeah. Hopefully something more fun than that. But I mean, it would be really cool. Ah, oh, man, I, I love I love world generation stuff like that. And there's some really good papers on that kind of stuff. I'm going to fly over here quickly and I'm going to park right near this bit of terrain. Because this guy is a real, this is where I want it to cut through. If we can get these two to join up. I guess what we could do is we can soften the terrain. Man, I've got to focus on actually writing some new stuff. Otherwise, we're going to be on like stream 50 of erosion. Right. Okay. Ah, we're going to change terminology. Okay, so we've got terrain height, which is B, still B, that's fine. And it's eight neighbors by BI, which is zero, one, two. Ah, oh, what's the, um, let's denote the height difference between the cell and its lowest neighbor by, by uh, this formula here, which is fine. Nothing too scary there. We're just going to take the minimum. The area of each of the cells is A and the volume to be moved is this. This is the maximum, otherwise the algorithm oscillates to handle local, um, local R? Oh, this is the terrain hardness. We've extended the formula. Okay, so this allows the terrain hardness value that we would have otherwise to be used between the hydraulic and the thermal erosion. That's cool. Uh, where k is a global coefficient, we then move this amount to the lower neighbors proportionally if the so-called talus angle is larger than that, uh, larger than, larger than that, the value, okay, so larger than the value determined by material viscosity. The talus angle is an important static parameter of solid granular materials without cohesion between grain particles. Okay, so... To measure this parameter, okay, so what it is, it's the talus angle is shown really nicely up here. Um, it's the highest angle where you get no falling, basically. This is the last stable angle. Any slope, any steeper and grains fall. So that's what we're modeling, essentially. Now, luckily, we don't have to fuck around with, I don't think we have to worry about the, oh, okay. Do we have to do the talus angle? Ooh. That's fine. We'll work it out. Can you imagine some of the hideous list mascot aliens roaming around the country? I, yeah, totally, dude. Actually, I have... I have an animated Lisp alien model somewhere. There was a the guy who posted it ages ago, some Japanese, I think. I'm not going to claim to know which language, glyphy language it was because I'm terrible at identifying those. But I did contact, whoa, what the fuck happened to our simulation? What the hell? I just no information at all. Nothing. What was that? It's just gone. Oh, that's really troubling. Oh, shit. Something hit zero. We've got to divide by zero somewhere and everything went to not a number. Balls. Well, that sucks. Oh well, I'll have to find that later. Aww.
Wait. And now nothing's happening? Did I... Did I just change something on the other side and completely missed it? Screw something up here. Because now we're not getting... We're not getting much of anything. Oh dear. Oh, it's not. This isn't working at all. Oh, wait. Muppet only ran one frame. There we go. Okay, so we're back running again. That's still very disturbing that we just suddenly get a divide by zero. And that it would trash the entire map like that. I suppose a divide by zero would then propagate really fast. Oh, that's interesting, actually. <laughs> Aliens at my tariff types, indeed. Huh. Oh well. Anyway, while we're screwing around with things, I want to set the... Uh, where's the erosion stuff? Here we go. Local hardness. No point oh one. Oh, has that made it harder? Or yes, it has made it harder. We should set it to 0 0.9. And then we should really see oh yeah, actually you can see some of the terrain falling already. Um Is that was that terrain falling? I'm actually struggling to work out now. Might have just been water piled up. Hmm. Let's get some of this crap out of the way so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, We should see things starting to get lower, but maybe not. Maybe it's just that the, even with this, the, um, it still can only take a small amount of soil at a time. So maybe we need to up the rain amount as well. Yeah, do 20. Now we're starting to erode some. Oof, we've made a mess of the map now. Stop the rain. Everything's oscillating like crazy, but it is slowly falling. I think it keeps on dropping loads of uh, dirt and then it's getting pushed up and it's... F That's nasty though, it should be, um, should be fairly stable. Oh well. <laughs> oh there we go again okay okay yeah we're getting a we're getting a divide by zero let's uh let's pull again let's uh query yeah not a number no 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 number sweet okay so what happens is we get a divide by zero somewhere at one of uh, one or two of the cells and then because everything's doing operations looking at its neighbor the not number propagates and it propagates in a diamond because that's the directions we query in is forwards and backwards <laughs> so we get this little thing where the world just ends and ends with a pattern okay well at least i i'm, I'm glad i actually understand why that's happening now so that was actually worth dicking around with let us go to this and set it back to whatever it was so i'll we'll set it to 0 0.1 so it has it's a little bit softer Actually, let's put it to 0.8. 
I want to see something happen, damn it. Even if it's just we keep on having to reset it. <sighs> there we go. And that's the rain falling. Good. Okay. Focus, Chris. God damn it. Right. Let's uh. Let's do this. Oh. Okay. So let's get back to this. This is their new formula. Um, where KT is a global coefficient for something. So let's look at KT, which will have a thermal erosion rate. There we go. Um, then we move this amount to the lower navels proportionally. So if the so-called talus angle is larger than that, the value determined by the material viscosity. The talus angle, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Estimate the distance between two cells by D and talus angle by alpha. Estimate the set of neighbors that are lying lower than the current element by this. Fair enough. Oh, interesting. Lower than the current element under talus angle by A equals... B is... Okay, so B I is the neighbor. B is our current height. Is less than... Zero... What are they trying to say here? I doubt this is like a zero to the power of 10. Um, Ka and Ki, where Ka and Ki are global simulation parameters controlling minimum talus angles, dependence on our thing, local hardness factor. Okay, each element in A will get a part of the volume proportional to its height difference. Okay. Contrary to the original model, we do not move uh, the volumes directly to the cells and set because this would induce data write dependency. Yeah, we're doing we're doing shaders. We don't want that kind of immediate writing. We want to do everything in parallel. Okay, similar to fluid flow simulation, we put these quantities into eight virtual pipes. Um, okay, so we've got to do eight this time. Um, then a separate separate simulation step updates the terrain height for each cell by summari uh, summarizing summarizing maybe. Summarizing, sure. The incoming material flow from the neighbors. With this modification, we can easily introduce the algorithm parallel and integrate in parallel and integrate it into the fluid-based simulation. Okay. okay, so this part is probably going to be done in step zero. This is kind of interesting, actually. Okay, water increment due to rain or water sources. Water Flow, yeah, that's what we do using the shallow model. Computation of velocity fields, yada yada. That was in step two. Soil flow calculation with outflow and virtual pipes of thermal erosion model. Simulation of um, erosion deposition process. We don't have to integrate it yet. We can probably do these as two separate stages and then add them all together later. We can interleave whenever we like. Transportation of suspended sediments by the velocity field. Thermal erosion material amount calculation and then water evaporation. Oh yeah, water evaporation. We need to have that. Did I skip that? I have a feeling I did. Yeah, we're down to implementation details. Where was the... Even said it was really important. Okay, in nature the evaporation has a negligible effect. Okay, wait, is it this? We simulate water... Oh yeah, it's this bit. Okay. In the last step, we simulate water evaporation. This. Um, DT. It's interesting, again, that, that it's affecting D, which is the terrain. Is that not the terrain height? Pretty sure that was the terrain height. Oh, no, it's B. B is the terrain height. D is the depth. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. Fair enough. Then that's then that's correct. We need to do evaporation. Let's get that in. Um, I 
Is that spelled correctly? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we take the new water height and we are going to... Oh, who knows? We're going to need this. Cool. We're going to need into the signature and we'll go above. And we're going to need the time step as well. Whoops. Let's put this out here actually. And just know that time delta is going to be around here somewhere. Actually, does it mention time delta? K E delta T. I'm wondering if that's multiplied by delta delta T. Because that hmm what does that look like in here? Yeah, that's that's multiply. So the new water is going to be the current water height is a float. Water height times one minus KE, which is something. What is KE? Water evaporation rate. but we're going to use the value that they say their first demonstration it's water evaporation multiplied by time delta that's it oh that's easy evaporate and time delta wrap that around there and it's water minus evaporation. And that should mean, hopefully, if we turn the um, rain off now, and just wait, we get a divide by zero. Something about this triggers the divide by zero. Cool, well that's interesting. So there'll be a divide by water amount somewhere. Strange though. Oh well, speeds things up. Um, evaporate. Time zelta is never zero. Oh, don't worry about it. Worry about this later. We can just reset it every time for now. Let's see what's going on the uh, in chat land. Code never crashes, but when it does, it does with style. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Is that lake getting smaller? I think some of it might be. I don't know. No, oh, no, because we just restart it. Oh, I'm talking rubbish. Yeah, maybe if it hits the zero point altitude, possible. Yeah, it, it's going to be something. It'll actually be quite easy to find, but I think it'll be really boring to find. So I'm just going to leave it for now. But, um... So if you see a diamond, if you see a diamond-shaped hole in the ground in real life, it's the beginning of the end of the earth. Pretty much. That's our. Uh, that's the conspiracy theory for this for this week. We need more conspiracy theories. Um, I am not going to look up those tunes because I don't need that stuck in my head. Are these formulas depending on the heights being positive? Dependent on the heights being positive? I don't know actually. That could be it. Maybe we just erode down and we hit negative, and yeah, it's a little strange though. Like, it shouldn't matter, as long as it's differences all the time. Um, 
How many cells are we seeing? It's a 512 by 512 grid. Um, yeah, keep asking. I don't care. It takes me ages to, to actually come to the chat and see what's going on anyway. Um, <laughs> who stops the rain? Me. God, I can't know. Not Pink Floyd. Jesus. It's not a problem with Pink Floyd. I fucking love it. But I'll just... That'll be me gone. I need to be sitting here zoning out. Right. Oh, we're so close though. This is the last page of the paper. Come on, Chris. Focus. Focus. Won't be too bad if we get it done in... Three episodes or so. That'd be kind of cool. Um, right, so let's go, just drop this down anywhere here. Let's clean it up and see if we can get some thermal erosion going. So this is the sediment at that position, blah, 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 blah. Kind of weirded out they'll be using the same variable for the falling sediment as in the in-solution sediment. I don't like the sound of that, um, but we'll, we'll see what this is. Hey, there goes the terrain again. <laughs> hmm. Ah, oh, we don't need it. We need to. We need to write things. If that stops me from. So the terrain height, yada yada. And the oh yeah, all the neighbors by this. Does it matter the order of the neighbors? No, it shouldn't do. We're doing everything to all of them, so that's okay. Um. And it's lowest neighbor by this, so. Start implementing this stuff. We just neighbor, neighbor. I don't know what it is in American. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so we're just going to be max, and then we've got all the neighbors to look at. Now it's going to be a little messy. So. Oh, okay. Um, we've got this, but more. Oh boy, it'll be ugly. Okay. Um, text step is one over the text size, and that's fine for going left, right, up, and down, but diagonal. Oh no, that's fine. We can just yeah, you just do both. I'm an idiot. I was starting to think that was <laughs> starting to think it'd be more complicated than it was. Um, oh, what am I doing? Right. So um, yeah, let's think, Chris. Stop fucking around. Right. Okay, so top left is what? Okay, top left, top right, um. Bottom left and bottom right, something like that? Yeah, sure. And then we've got this again. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, sure. Um, I guess the order doesn't matter too much, but we'll make it consistent. We'll go top left. Well, that's interesting, actually. No, it won't be that, will it? Left. 
Top left. Top, top right, right. Bottom right, whatever. Bottom left. Something like that. Doesn't really matter yet, anyway. Oops. As you can see, my brain has just not been on my side recently. Um, bottom left, bottom right. UV, top left, top right, bottom right, <laughs> bottom left. Um, so yeah, that's the data at all those points. I'm looking forward to abstracting this a bit. Um, Chimera has come up with a convincing distraction. Ah, oh, nice man. The what, um, oh yeah, that's QT for your editor there, isn't it? Sweet, man. Right, let's bring up chat again. Nice. Okay, so we just want the... We want the maximum height difference, so we need our... Terrain height is X of data. And that means we're going to have the same for all of this nonsense. So, um, data at the left, right, data at top, data at bottom. Top left, top right, um, bottom left, bottom right. Okay, so that's, oh yeah, of course. Um, oh man, I haven't set up, I've been trying to get used to using uh, multi-cursors on my other machine, but I haven't copied the config over here yet, so. I don't have it, but I will do so. Um, This is just stupid. This is something I should be able to do in seconds rather than this farting around. Bottom left, bottom right. There we go. Um, and so then we want the the maximum of the height differences. And if it's lower than us, so it should be their height. So height. Let's just take these. Again, this is, um, yeah, I'm starting to think they want their height differences to be positive, which is a bit, which is a bit gross, actually. That might account for some of the differences between, uh, the paper and my implementation. Hmm. Because, yeah, they're using max. That would also explain the other one as well. God damn it. So, well done whoever called that out earlier. That was spot on. Um, yeah. They want the height difference between the current cell and its lowest neighbor by H. So, it's the maximum height difference. Um, let's do what they say then for now. Because it will make it easier to implement later on. Oops.
Oh, just height difference. Okay, so once we got that, we need to... Still got this formula to do. Let's move it down here. So... Sediment is something to do with A, it's just an area multiplied by the time delta, so we're going to need that. KT, which I've already forgotten what that is. Thermal erosion rate. Thermal. Thermal. Oh, we don't have it defined yet. Okay. Let's do that. Def var. KT. And then RT at any given point, that was something to do with the density or what do we call it? Um, hardness. There we go. Local hardness. Which right now is just a constant function, but that'll change later. Multiply by Largest height diff divided by two. Let's lay this out as the. Uh... Oh. A was area of. Of what? The area of each of the cells is A. So in our case, it's one. But um, do we have that recorded anywhere? I mean, virtual pipe length in this case is going to do for that. So we'll just use that for now. Um, virtual pipe length. Yeah, that, that's that should be correct. It's just going to be one anyway, so it's not going to be a problem. It's not going to fuck up if we got it wrong. Um, time delta, thermal erosion rate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's, that is that formula. So, what do we do with that? The distance between the two cells is D. Don't redefine D here. It's one paper. Come up with a new variable name. It's not that hard. Ah! Anyway, chat, what's going on? <laughs> We're just checking out Chimera's scene graph stuff at the moment. Cool. I can't focus on that code properly at the moment, but I'd love to. Yeah, pixel out or mathematicians are terrible at variable names. Super fucking annoying. I don't. Oh, their, their memories must be just outstanding. I, I, I struggle so much in all, all papers. I'm doing okay in this one, but grr. Anyway, I love it when it's uppercase and lowercase variations of Greek letters, which because so when I'm doing handwritten notes to try and keep tabs of what's going on, it's really hard to tell the difference between. Various things. It's like, oh, fuck off. Right. Yeah. Less rage. More writing. Okay, where are we? Um, let's donate the distance between two cells as D. No, we'll donate it as pipe length because that's what we're already using. And talus angle by alpha equals tan BD. But oh, okay. Sure. We can do that. And this is, function is quickly changing into something else, so uh, we'll deal with that soon. 
Uh, what well, should we just call it? Erosion step two. Uh, definitely two cells is D and a talus angle, so E on G. Talus angle to be something. It's going to be tan of height, offset height. I don't know why I settled on offset height. It's height at the offset, I suppose, but neighbor height is more correct, but, oh well. And so it is height minus offset height divided by, um, what do we call it? Virtual pipe length. Cool, it's good to know. Um, let's denote the set of neighbors that are lying lower than the current element under the talus angle by lying lower than the current element under the talus angle. What does it mean? Okay. Let's sign this formula up a little so we can use it. I really liked the idea of Ometa and the fact that they were able to do graphics routines just on the kind of equations and stuff like this as they were in textbooks. But the more I've thought about it, the less I like it. Okay, so... So I guess this is, so this is a less comprehension, I guess. This is BI where... Oh, the, sorry, that's AND, isn't it? That's a... That's a when these things are in both sets so it's it's less than zero and it's also um it's talus angle is oh and it's tan a is greater than this it's interesting they're using tan a for the talus angle there rather than oh wait the alpha is the okay never mind never mind They calculate the talus angle and then they tan the angle. All right. Whatever you say, boss. Let's. Uh... So what are we going to do with A? So then we're going to. Hmm. I guess what we're going to do is sum together the height differences and then we're going to divide the sediment among those based on the height differences PC can suck my dick. I can't entirely disagree with that. Um, swearing to anyone pattern is just asking for trouble. General bitching about C sharp going in the chat now. <laughs>
Shimera, by the way, bag is on Christmas. I expect you to color your beard white, stream in a sand suit. That would be awesome. Man, I'm just, I mean, to be honest, the best thing I can do is just wait. C++, there's just, there's a lot of cool languages inside C++, but they don't play together very well. Um, I'm sure you can, you can take C++ and you can find a number of quite nice languages in there. But uh, I, I'm not a, I, I'm kind of, I, I get really excited. I've been enjoying how much activity there is around C++ more recently, especially the, the, readers, the latest C++ conferences, like the main C++ conferences have been pretty awesome. Some of the talks that come out there can be very insightful because of just how anal they are about performance. But yeah, it's, it's got its own problems. And again, it's, it's focus on object oriented is slightly against its uh, need to be cache coherent and all the rest of it, but meh. So it'll be. Want to like it, but just can't. Ah, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so KA and KI, we need to have those defined because we're gonna need those. KA and KI. I'll be back in just one second. Hold on. Keep your fucking hair on, boys. Right. And girls. And other. Right, so let's go and do this. So this is KA. This is KI. So we need that. Now what are we going to do with them? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, why am I apologizing? I need she knows. I've still got it. It feels like we're still getting the end of hay fever season here. Um, so just yeah, annoying. Um, each element in A will be part of the volume um, delta SI proportional to its height difference. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're going to put these into the eight virtual pipes, which means we are... Oh, eight virtual pipes. That means two floats per... So this has to be in a frag shader, and we need to return two floats to store all this data. I wonder if we can do this in the first step. I think it should be possible, and then the second step we can add it in with everything else. Interesting. Yeah, we're nearly there. We're nearly done. Okay, so it's just this. So...
multiplied by that proportion. Okay. We've already got delta S. Oh, so close. Okay, so. So, how does it work? It was the bi, the height divided by the sum of, ah, this is where I really need to be. The sum of the heights where the heights, yeah. Okay, so we need to get the total height of all the elements that are in the set. Fine. Um, yeah, let's actually make this friendly out. Let's do um, in thermal set, we'll do this, and then we'll do, and, what is it? Um, terrain height and offset height. less than zero and tan of alpha and alpha is said to be the where do we define alpha it was up here somewhere oh come on oh here we go tan of that over d which we had around here wasn't it yeah, this one. Oh, that's what we call the talus angle, yeah. Tan of the talus angle of uh, terrain height and offset height. The tan is greater than, and we got back to the local hardness again, which is the R and the K and I. So, whoops. And talus angle bias. Okay. This is weird. Didn't we just work that out there? Oh well, never mind. Forget it. Doesn't matter. Oh, of course, yeah. Let's uh, actually add the things we need. Terrain. Height is a float and offset height is a float. What's interesting about this actually is it doesn't take into the account whether you're underwater or not, which surely has an effect on thermal erosion. But uh, me doesn't matter. So if in thermal set based on terrain height and offset height. Then we're gonna return something. Otherwise, we're gonna return zero. Because we want no. So total. Total heights, whatever this is called. Total um, thermal height or something. Terrible names. So if it's in this, then return the difference. In this case, it was the height minus the offset height. I'm still confused about this because it feels like you're trying to work how much terrain is falling off of you, which means you want to know which ones are lower than you, which we're doing here, and then 
Yeah, that's get, getting a negative number. And then here we're, oh yeah, this and this point we want to know the height difference. Okay, so then they're doing it in a positive way. Okay, offset height. So, ah, oh, what? Okay, let me, let me think about this again. Here, if this height minus this height, if the neighbor is lower, then this is going to be positive. So then it's not going to be zero. Hmm. I'm not sure about this. I still think there's something a bit funky in the paper around this, but we'll work it out later. Um, terrain height minus offset height. That's what the paper says. Or something like that. They want the difference in heights. And this will give us a positive number. We want all the... No, I'm still not happy with it. Oh well. Thermal height. Then we want... And then we're going to change this to a rain height count to, um, oh, what was it? Thermal height. All right. We did compile those, didn't we? Yeah. And then. I'm a little distracted. Bloody hell! How's it been an hour 40 already? Good plan on grabbing coffee. I'm feeling the same thing at the moment. This height needs uh, terrain height as well. Ah. Oh. Multiple cursors or macros. I should be using one of them. Just need my brain to hold out a little longer for the stream. Okay. So damn close. Right. So we've got the total now, and then we can, for each one, we can do the following. We can, come on, really? Oh yeah, that's a bloody variable name. Right. Um, thermal sediment is going to be, um, Total thermal height, which is a float, and then it's local height, which is a float, and also the total sediment amount. Actually, I want to pass that in first. And so we just multiply the total sediment amount by these two things divided, which is the No, no. There we go. And the results, there's going to be two values. Call 
probably look like this. The sediment, the total thermal height, and then the height for each one. So height on the left, and this is where order is going to matter again. Actually, we've been doing this left, right, top, bottom, top, left, blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's keep that. This order, shitty order I did up here. That's just annoying, so let's not do that. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Yeah. So down here we can just do F right top top bottom top left top right bottom right oops okay so that is too many for one vector So we're going to be returning two vectors from this stage, and we're going to need to write them into something. That's a lot, actually. I wonder what we're going to pack this into. We're going to need another. We need another texture just to shove this data in. And the last few times, the problem is I don't, like, sorry, I was just looking at the Steam stuff and I was just cause, just remembering the other day, I don't use Steam enough for Steam apparently. Because it's got this thing where every time I go on, and I, I, I turn on a game because I want to chill out. So I load up and I'm just like, right, I need Doom, I need something cathartic. And I go in and it's like, oh yeah, you can't play until you've updated and it's a 36 gig update. Right. Well, we're not playing games then. That's not happening. Super annoying. I'm just getting everything from GOG now, so at least I can, at least I can download it and own it to a degree. I don't need an update today. I completed the game already. I just want to kill a few things. It's fine. Ah, oh well. Okay, so this is probably it. I think. Then the only thing we need to do in another stage is actually just add this sediment. So there'll be another stage which adds this amount of sediment to the neighbors and removes it from itself. So I guess we would also want to return the, what is it, the height water sediment map. So we've got, that's confusing now, because it feels like there should be two different sediment values, one for um, hydraulic erosion and one for thermal erosion. I find it very strange that we would be putting both of them in the same, but they're using ST at time, and ST up here has been for, where is it? I thought it was. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so we have WX, we have C, we calculate C. We go up here, we work out BTS1. Oh, so little s. Little s is to do with hydraulic erosion, it seems. <laughs> so they're using capital S. Oh, that is annoying. All right. Capital S seems to be the amount of sediment. And they sediment delta. They don't actually give it a proper name. Okay. Fine. So we don't want to change many of the values here, I don't think. Actually, no, we, we do need to do something. So the... What am I doing here? We've got the... Let's look at the data. Oh, man. Come on, brain, not longer. Not much longer, anyway. Not longer. 
dear me. Okay, so. So x of data was the height, whoops. Uh, the y of data was the water height. The z was the amount of sediment. That was dissolved into the fluid. Um, yeah. So that should be fine. Oh, actually, we do need to move this to a new line, don't we? Because we need to put zero. But we're taking some of the sediment off. We've got this total thermal height nonsense. Where is it? Sediment. Here we go this amount so we've got to remove that from our current height unless we're going to do that in the next pass maybe i don't think that's necessary i think this is fine and then we'll the next pass is going to add all of these down cool Papers on algorithm stuff should require to flow diagrams. Feel you, man. Yeah, I could go for some of that. Hey, cool. I see Half-Life 3 in comments in the chat, so I know it's not even worth reading what's going on in there right now. But I, I, I would just go for some Half-Life 3, man. Mostly doing Vive stuff at the moment. Man, I, Vive is one of the VR headsets I actually consider buying. I mean, I can't at the moment because I'm trying not to spend loads, but yeah, Vive or the Razer, and the um, Razer one is just because it works on Linux, and I mean, I don't really need a VR headset for games, I just want something I can code for, and that would be sweet, but it's a lot of money still for, oh, I get... no, I could get it, but it would be, you know. Darius, that uh, Dota stuff, that pay-to-play stuff sounds really shitty. I've actually been quite impressed looking at how um, how much content the, um, what is it, Final Fantasy XV stuff that seems to be coming out. Oh no, I guess that actually is people were tempted to buy, you could buy a pack which included the future releases and stuff. There seems to be a lot of content coming for that thing anyway. It does look like the game just wasn't finished though. There's a lot of stuff that feels like it needed to be filled out. Tried the Vive and was not as impressed with the VR as I expected to be. Oh, alright. Interesting. Um, oh, not impressed with VR in general. Have you tried the, um, like the Oculus or any of those kind of ones? Or um, is it just the Vive so far? Yeah, there's, there's not worth touching anything in the AR space for quite a while. Um, I tried the Microsoft thing, but again, and again, it's one of the most impressive tech demos that I've seen made available to the public kind of thing, but it's it, it's not a product. I mean, like, you couldn't use that yet. It's not suitable for anything. It's not suitable for industry. It, need, it would need to be ruggedized. And it's not suitable for home because it's a big fucking heavy thing. I mean, it's really impressive how stable the tracking is. Really impressive, but yeah. Magic Leaf, Magic Leaf. Again, they've got they they haven't made anything. You get these stories of people going there and go, "Oh, now I'm a believer," and they're buying stock. So they would say that. But I mean, prefer terrain erosion no, with the VR. Thanks, sir. Um, the mind control headset SDK stuff. No, I haven't. And there was a group near here. There's an Oslo um, neural hackers group not far from here. And I did go to one of their meetups. Uh, but I've been too busy, to be honest, to go back to some more. But they were doing um, brain sensor and um, concentration detection and stuff like this. Which is pretty awesome. So they were going to make a computer game controlled by the brain. But, it's, uh... but again, it's very low resolution at the moment. I'm a lot more interested in getting some sensors on arms and doing some kind of nerve reading kind of stuff. That would be sweet. Crash detainment. Yeah, the drone stuff. That's funny. I love the FPV drones. 
Man, I'm just not focusing. It's nearly 10, and I still haven't done anything. Okay, so... Where are we? What to do with this erosion step? Okay, um... Well, it's but ugly, that's what I do know. So, what's the best thing to do with this? We're going to need some text just to shove it in. Um, so let's go and look at our state stuff again. We've got a couple of maps here, so we're going to need... Um, Thermal map 0 and thermal map 1. Oops. Okay, and then we're going to need down here, we need to make some more textures, which again will be the same kind of ones as this. T0 map, T1 map, um, we're going to yeah I suppose we can just map them all the time we'll just stick them in the main FBO and can't think of a reason not to other than you know it's more state changes than we need really but yeah it's not though it's just one FBO who cares it'll be fine um, T0 map and T1 map. We need the thermal map 0 is sample T0 map. T1 map. So that makes the state. And then Set. Okay, so now we need to reset needs to reset two more things. And then this stage up here. But now we can just let's just set it to zero. So we've got it in place. Where is it? A road sediment. Da, 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 da. Step one. Okay, so. So that's all of the current code updated to be able to handle this thing. But our current terrain still doesn't have. Where's reset terrain? Um, oh no, that was, that was down here, wasn't it? Yeah, we just keep it. So we. Let's uh, split this way again. Terrain. Let's inspect that. You can see that. Oh wait, what? Oh yeah, state zero. So both both of these have the thermal maps unbound. You know what? It's probably going to be easier to restart <laughs> than. Uh, Okay, a legal function call. Where's that? Oh, that sounds correct. Text size is undefined. Oh yeah, I know what that is. That's uh, this bad boy down here. Okay, so that's fine. Nice, that's back. See what's going on. Oh, Barrett, have you actually played with the, um... Oh, when it flew towards your face in the video, or did you actually, were you there for when they were testing out the brain control drone stuff?
Oh, Darius, that sounds really sucky, the way they're handling that pay-to-play stuff does. Yeah. <laughs> Pass, pronounced with a silent P. Indeed. Indeed. Um, can I be bothered to... Yeah, stop being lazy and just fix it, Chris. God damn. This is one of these places I should have written a, um... Oh, what's the name of it? There's a method for, for like, update instance when class redefined or something like this. Um... Actually, yeah, we just free the old terrain state and make a new one. So... What am I belly aching about? Terrain. State zero. Terrain state. Free that. Oh yeah, it's going to freak out because of that. Whatever, that's fine. Um, <laughs> set up for that to be made terrain state. Sure, let's see what happens. There we go. Let's yeah, just ditch the other one while we get this fun. Um, oh, I love FBOs and stuff just working. Ah, wait, is that? Yeah, it is as well. That's correct. Nice. Um, cool. This Kepler thing would actually be useful if I used it. Um, make tools for live coding, then bitches about things being difficult and just could have done them live. Fool! Mumble, mumble, grumble. In real life. Oh man, that's great. Um, just a cheap power at one way replaceable boogie repairable frame. Fortunately, yeah, that is fortunate. But that's cool though. That's some cool toys to be playing with. Hey, you guys see that um, GL 4.6 is out as well? That's kick ass. I've added support to that to Vario today. Um, not that there's any implementation, the driver that's. Oh no, maybe the drivers are out. There's some stuff out. I don't know. If not, the drivers are coming very soon. And it's cool. It's, uh, as far as we're concerned, like, because we're not doing stuff with um, Vulcan, it's not a huge deal, but it does uh, add a couple of ARBs to the standard, which are really interesting. So, um, or really useful. We're going to be using them for making our code much faster over time, so that's awesome. Um... Pixel Outlaw, I need a uh, GPU upgrade so I can move off 3.3. .3. Yeah, no. It's kind of cool is the, um, a lot of the straight up Intel uh, GPUs now handle 4.5 or even 4.4 .4, and that's enough to be doing so much stuff. And the, um, I think the Intel drivers are going to be pretty quick out with the 4.6 stuff because they were, they were the ones that leaked 4.6 was going to be happening anyway. There was a, about a month, there's a few weeks or a month back that they, they had a, like a, a, um, a patch that said like, oh, putting this in because it's needed for, because it apparently it's needed for, for, for GL 4.6. And then it was like, redact really fast because they're not meant to say it publicly yet, which was great. Um, yeah. So let's see, we should get this into stage one. I don't think we need to put it anywhere else. Um, which means then we can do data at I know it's gone past 10, but I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking of hanging out just for a little longer because I wouldn't mind getting some of this at least put into... There goes all our terrain again! <laughs> I'd like to get this stuff into the shader. And then what I'll do in the next week is just um, clean it up. And that means next stream will probably not be terrain erosion related at all. 
we'll, well, I mean, we'll start off just playing with it. We'll have like five minutes of coding to do to get it all to work. And then um, we'll, uh, yeah, what should we do? Yeah, we'll have five minutes to get it to work. We'll play with it a little, throw some terrains at it. Um, and then we'll have erosion. So then we'll have to find something else to do. I don't know what that'll be. Um. Hmm. actually need to get out of this. Hmm. I think we can just return the sediment and the other two vectors. And we'll pass these on to the next stage and we'll subtract this from the sediment in the stage one. Um, let's take this stuff Oh, we don't need to remove that Okay. I think we can take this, drop it down in here. Oh, well, value bind. Um, sediment removed, and then some other values. What were the two other values? It was. Um, Sediment flux, Ugh. yeah, flux zero, sediment flux one. That's those values, and that. Sediment removed. I think we're going there. So, Vegas, how many grass skirts do you see people wearing down here on your travels? Down in New Zealand? 
Not many of them, eh? So, sort of few on Rarotonga, of course, but... <laughs> you really read the lucky country, then. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, we're nearly here. Nearly at a point I'm happy to wrap up for the night, but I just wanna wanna clean this up a little more. Terrain height, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, we need um need to pass in this as well. We're not gonna have this do anything useful right now, but oops. At least be ready for, ready to be cleaned up when I'm a little more awake. Start oh, winning, Chris. It's all fine. Right. Largest height diff, sediment, total thermal height. Oh, this is easy. No applicable method for max when cooled with a whole shit ton of things. Fair enough. Is max only for two? I should have just read the message. Um, assuming fragment stage. There's no applicable method for max when school with that. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Um, I guess that's right, isn't it? It doesn't do, you don't have enery. Oh, we're gonna have to do max, max, max. Ew. No. It's horrible. <laughs> This cannot be the way. This is so sad. How do people in GLS all do things? It can't be this. Just a little more. Get another coffee, guys. It's going to take a while. Ah! It's got dregs. Mmm. Cold coffee. Uh, time delta is undefined. Very true. Very true. Let's put that. Nah, let's put it at the bottom. Who cares? Just put it somewhere. God damn it, man. We've got a stream going on. Largest height diff is undefined. <laughs> okay, now it compiles. Where is it? Thermal step zero. Time delta. It compiles. Right. Now I just need to make sure that I didn't completely screw everything up. Yep, water's still running. Holy... Jesus, though. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of sediment. Huh. Did I change the wrong value? I'm not using this sediment flux yet, so it shouldn't be affecting that much. Oh, wait, I've, um, this is the, I've been affecting the wrong thing. Sediment amount. I should have been removing this sediment from the terrain height. Ah, it doesn't matter. We'll fix that soon. That's pretty cool, though. Right. Any questions, comments, insults, random crashing? They see it's wrapping up. It's telling me it's time. Um, yell them out. Because uh, otherwise we're... I think we're done for the evening. But we're so close now. We are... We're five, ten minutes work away from getting something working. Five, ten minutes of someone who's focused rather than me. <laughs> yep, families are all spotted. <laughs> that was the Diamond of Doom. Oh, no, I'll be offline for two weeks. Holidays. Nice, man. Good luck. Have fun. Good luck. Good luck at having holidays. I hope you survive. Um, thank you for letting me know that the audio video for the next couple of weeks is good. Glad you got me my back. No, thank you guys. It's been good. Cheers, Barrett. We're, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. And then we'll have to do something with this erosion stuff. But, uh... It'd be nice to make the, the water look good as well, but 
Making things look good is not my specialty yet. Finishing this isn't my specialty either. But we're at the, um, what is this, third stream? So that's six hours? I'm alright with that. That's like one, one afternoon, one day's farting around. That's cool. Part six of the erosion? Screw you! Mr. Underhill over there. Hey! Good to see you. You're a very quiet gentleman. But thanks for saying. Um, yeah, thanks folks. Good to see you again. And uh, give another 10 seconds for any comments or questions. And then I will. I will leave. I mean, next time we can just play around with this stuff, actually. That's probably the point of the stream. Just fart around and see what values we can throw in. So this is, is this turning into a Minecraft Let's Play series of 300 parts? Yeah, exactly that. I give up. <laughs> yeah, you all have a good week too, folks. Take care. See you next time. See if I can hit this button. Oh!